CGIAR Research Program on Rice, Seat Rice Physiologist, Maria Camilla Rivedo, Global Lead Flagship Project 4, Global Rice Array. What is the vision for this flagship? So our main project here is to identify different kind of tools. So there's tools uh, related to phenotyping, to genotyping, to uh, analysis, big data analysis, to uh, pathogens and uh, pest disease resistance, and uh, also some of genetic tools, like uh, for analysis of different varieties. How will this flagship help farms in Asia and in Africa? So we are mainly in the upstream, so actually we are not really directly connected to farmers, but our idea is that all our products will be used by other flagships, so mainly flagship 5, which is breeders. So what we are producing will allow the breeders to produce varieties in a faster rate, and not only in a faster rate, but also varieties that will be adapted to climate change. So that's how we will impact farmers either in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, really producing tools to adapt the varieties to different climatic conditions. So we are going to have like a, a kind of different uh, antennas around the world, and these antennas will sense how climate is affecting rice yields, and with this sensing we will understand how rice is behaving under different environments, and this understanding will be translated to breeders, so breeders will produce varieties at a faster rate. What are antennas? The antennas are sites, so actually are sites that are representative of different environments, so there are sites in Asia, sites in Africa, and sites in Latin America, and in, on those sites we are going to do experiments, and these experiments will allow us to characterize those sites, and it's not just to say that this site is hot, this site is cold, but it's really to say how this hot or these temperatures are affecting yields and how can we face that. So which traits a plant need to face those, that stress and then which tools we can produce to breeders so they can produce better varieties for this site. How are the national partners linking to this flagship? How will they benefit from this flagship? There are two kinds of benefits. The first benefit is capacity development. So all the tools that we are producing will be uh, translated or transmitted to, to our local partners. But also we are going to do many experiments on their sites. So like that is not just uh, capacity development in terms of courses or training, but also we are going to be on their site. So we are going to work with them with different tools so they, they will be able to, to appropriate that. This is the first kind of, of, of benefit. And the other kind of benefits, as I said before, is uh, given to them varieties that are more adapted to their environment to face climate change. How is this flagship linking up with sea calves? For the moment there are two linkages. So there is a linkage in Africa rice. They work really closely with sea calves in order to once we have characterized different environments, we want to know uh, how those environments will behave in the future. So CCAFs give to us some uh, climatic predictions, for example, so we can mix both information and tell the farmers or tell the breeders how these varieties will behave in the future. Like that we can map how those varieties are behaving and which varieties we need now and for the future. So there are linkage now going on in Africa with Africa rice and in Latin America with Seat. Is there a priority for addressing climatic stresses? We have different activities. So one of the activity is try to sense what is happening. So we don't know what will appear. In some sites perhaps there will be heat, in some sites drought, in other sites salinity, other flooded. So that's, that's the way, we have want to know what is happening. And there are other activities, more detailed activities, where they are going to prioritize the stress, but it depends what we have at the beginning. So for example, if in Africa we found out that heat at the reproductive stage is really a key trait, so the phenotypic tools and the genetics and the gene discovery is going to be guided to this information. So we are going to develop phenotypic tools for heat stress, we are going to find out new genes for heat stress, and we are going to give breeders markers, genes, and phenotypic tools for that stress. Because it's a stress that is relevant in Africa. 
and so on with different regions. And perhaps in Africa, it's not all over Africa that is heat. Perhaps in the north is heat, in the south is drought. Well, it depends, or it's a combination of stress. So for all of that, we have to know what is happening, and then we develop the tools for each specific condition. What is the time frame? Well, we have outcomes per year, so it depends. This year, the, the first, uh, there will be, we have been working with the projects before with GRISP, so there are phenotypic tools available, there are uh, models that are available, there are projects, bilateral projects that, that are ongoing, so we are going to have products. It's not that just we just begin from zero, no. So I think that this year we are going to have, at least, for example, in Africa, we are going to have a characterization of what is the main climatic risk for different rice production regions, the same for Latin America, and for Asia what we will have is to understand how different genetic populations may behave in different environments. So now what is ongoing is that in Asia there are big panels that are around different regions and we are going to see how the genotype is expressed on different regions. And in Latin America and in Africa, we are doing some modeling studies to understand what is happening. So for this year, the best is to know what is really happening now and use CCAPs to know what will be in the future and try to redirect the tools that we are going on. But in parallel, path uh, pathologists, physiologists are developing some tools. So we have the drones, we have uh, all the remote sensing with satellites, we have uh, also some... Uh, like innovative pathogens uh, research, not only uh, above the plant but also underground. And uh, so it's like research that is ongoing now and that has to connect next year to what we are doing on the field. How is this flagship different from what was done during GRISP? This flagship this didn't exist before. So it's really new. It's not like the other the, the other ones was like tried to redesign what was before. This one was really is, is really new. And what the main challenge is that we have to interact with different disciplines. So there are pathologies, there are physiologies, it's also informatic, bioinformaticians, geneticists. So all, the, all of us, we have to interact to give a result. So that is a big challenge and it's also the originality of, of this thing. And also the main thing is that now we are going to produce a lot of data. And this data will be stored and analyzed in a way that will not will allow us not only to give results for today, but also to have the data available in the future. So in the future, if we know that there is a problem in one side, we are going to this data and going and analyze that data and going to see if that happened in the past or not. So this is all also something new. So it's really related to the big data platform and uh, it's led here by IRI. And this is something really new and really challenging also that we are facing. For more information, visit www.africarice.org.